Okay, friends, I have saved the last supranationalist organization of all to the bitter end here because if we don't get our act together as humans, it, this particular organization is going to be the bitter end of us all. And I'm referring to, of course, the nuclear group. Those countries with nuclear weapons uh, and or working towards nuclear weapons. Um, it is an unofficial grouping, which is why it's in the oddball category. They don't even get together for meetings, but I, I really want you to understand the nuclear issue in today's world and who has nuclear weapons and who's working towards perhaps getting nuclear weapons and the rules and regulations about nuclear weapons because you can't understand today's uh, power structures uh, on the planet or potential threats or future threats or how countries are working together or how nuclear energy industries are even uh, created without understanding the new group and how it's regulated and controlled or perhaps not so well controlled. All right, first and foremost, who's in it? Who's in the nuke club? Well, some of these countries definitely got nuclear weapons. Some of them kind of do, but maybe don't admit it. And some admit something, but we're not sure what they got. Now, the, uh, uh, let's start with the first five. These are countries that have declared and tested nuclear weapons, shown them to the world, and have signed this thing called the NPT that I'll get back to in just a minute. And these five are the United States, Russia, the UK, France, and China. Stop right there! Don't those five countries sound familiar? That's right! That's the P5! The countries on the UN Permanent Security Council. And doesn't that make sense now that those countries with veto power also have nuclear weapon power? Because, you know, if they didn't veto it at the UN, I guess they could always veto it by nuking entire country or something going on. So perhaps that now starts to make sense why these five, these all-important five countries have so much power at the Security Council as well. However, they're not the only countries with nuclear weapons on the planet. Several other countries are known to have nuclear weapons, and two other countries have uh, both declared they have nuclear weapons and proven they have nuclear weapons, but they have not signed this all-important NPT treaty that I'll come back to in just a minute. And that is India and Pakistan. Both declared, proven, shown the world. Boom! Here we did a test. We got them. The last one is the most trickiest, maybe the last two. And that is there is another country which we're pretty sure, almost everywhere in the world is sure they got nuclear weapons, but they've never proven it publicly and they never admit to it. And that is Israel. Israel is known to have nuclear weapons. Everybody says they got nuclear weapons. Uh, but they have been encouraged by the United States and Team West in general to just kind of zip the lip and don't say nothing about it. <laughs> what? Why would the United States encourage Israel to uh, keep silent about their nuclear weapons? That seems like a pretty important thing that everybody should know about. Uh, in brief, and we'll talk about this more at a later lecture, everyone is petrified that if Israel were to declare they have nuclear weapons and open up their doors to nuclear weapons inspectors and have a count of all their weapons, that it would terrify the uh, countries in the Middle East who are already uh, worried with Israel, who, who, who have already gone to war with Israel in the past and who may go to war with Israel in the future, and that may terrify them so much as to create an arms race in the Middle East. Does that make a little bit of sense? So everybody kind of says, we know Israel's got nuclear weapons, and we're just going to let them stay silent about it. So anytime Iran or an Arab state or anybody in the world uh, comes to Israel and says, hey, you should declare, uh, do you guys have nuclear weapons? Just tell us. Israel pretty much says, uh, hey, look at that. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I got to go to the, the deli. Uh, I, what? Did somebody ask a question? I, hey, all right. See you later. I mean, it's very kind of don't ask, don't tell, even though everybody knows Israel has them. The, the, la the last one who is counted in this nuke group is more mysterious than even Israel. I mean, we kind of know what's going on in Israel, but we know the reasons why they stay silent about it. But the last one we usually put into the nuke club is North Korea. And that's more nebulous because they desperately want to have nuclear weapons, and they jump up and down and try to convince everybody that they have nuclear weapons. And they're like, hey, look at us, look at us, we got nuclear weapons. We're going to launch some shit at somebody, pay attention to us, look at us, look at us. We're like a little child, we need attention. The problem is that they have tested something, 
but we're not really sure what. They've blown some shit up underground before, but no one's sure if it's actually a nuclear weapon. And even if they have one, no one's that convinced that they could get it anywhere because they don't have a delivery mechanism. So even if they have something, the only thing they could do is like put their nuclear bomb in a canoe and try to row it to Japan or some shit. It just, we don't know. North Korea is so secretive. There's no inspections there. Nobody really knows, even though they kind of say, yes, we do. They want everybody to know they have nuclear weapons, or at least think they do, so that they can puff their chest up and look important in the world. So North Korea and Israel almost two opposite sides of the nuclear spectrum of we got them that are being quiet about them and we're not sure that they've got them but they're being very loud about it so, all right that's the nuke clump all in review now the united states russia the united kingdom france china india pakistan israel north korea of all of those countries and you should dedicate this to memory the United States and Russia have the overwhelming number of nuclear warheads. I mean, there ain't even a close third. I don't even know who number three is, and it don't matter. It's probably uh, China or the UK, and it don't even matter. Because this, the US and Russia have like 80 or 90% of all the nuclear weapons on planet Earth. Because, of course, it was a product of the Cold War that these two countries were competing with each other and building up these arsenals. And they have how many bombs? They have 100 bombs. Well, we need 101. What? They've got 101. Well, we need 102. Well, we need 1,002. Well, we need 3,002. Well, we need a million and ten. And that's how these two countries ended up with so much weapons capacity on the nuclear front. Okay? All right, that's the members. What are the rules of the game? How does it all work? Obviously, the original five, and that's the P5, declared nuclear powers, built up their weapon systems, again, because of the competition during the Cold War. There's not a lot of countries, or even the existing five, that are building more right this second. However, everybody, or a lot of countries on planet Earth, have in the past thought about make, making nuclear weapons or in the present are thinking about having nuclear energy. And all of this nuclear material is needed to do all this stuff. So you gotta have some rules of the game of how this is gonna work. Are we gonna regulate nuclear weapons? Most countries on the earth have said, no, we don't think there should be any more nuclear weapons, but at the same time, maybe there is gonna be a lot more nuclear energy. So how do we tease these things apart? How do we make this work so that everybody in the planet doesn't start getting nuclear weapons? <laughs> Because World War III would be really bad if it's a nuclear World War III. Thus, this thing called the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty was formed back in the uh, uh, 70s, actually 1970. And the NPT, and that's what I referenced a little while ago, the Non-Proliferation Treaty uh, was built to limit the spread or proliferation of nuclear weapons. And this again came about because in the 1950s and the 1960s, as the United States and the USSR were competing with each other and starting to build a lot of more atomic weapons and then nuclear weapons, a lot of other countries on the planet started to get a little worried, all right? Rightfully so, if you think about it. And it was actually Finland and Ireland, of all places, that proposed the NPT. And the, the ideology behind it was that these countries in Europe said, hey, you know what? <laughs> we don't want a nuclear weapon and we have no aspirations to get a nuclear weapon because they go boom and kill lots of people. And even though we openly say we're never gonna be a nuclear power, we don't want to be a nuclear power, we're in between the United States and Russia who have shit tons of nuclear weapons. And if a war breaks out between these two countries, we're in the middle, we're all dead anyway. It doesn't matter what we do, we're all gonna die. <laughs> so it was a European initiative that basically said, hey, we should try to start limiting these things so that these two big boys don't kill us all if they get into a fracas with nuclear weapons. And in 1970, they proposed this NPT uh, through the United Nations and it was wildly adopted and loved by virtually everyone on the planet. I know, how often does that happen? But it's one of those bizarre things where it currently has 189 signatories, 189 countries, that's almost everybody, have signed on to the NPT. 
why? I mean, I just said this rarely happens that the whole world supports an initiative. Why this one? Well, as I've suggested with Finland and Ireland, the ones who brought this thing up, the countries that were have-nots, that is not nuclear weapon holding countries, said, hey, we're all going to die in the middle of a nuclear war. So it's in our interest to limit nuclear weapons and make sure that nobody else gets any more of them and that we actually try to limit and decrease the amount of weapons that are existing already. Okay, So that's why the people who didn't have nuclear weapons all signed up for it. And that was, again, most of the world. But why would the countries that had nuclear weapons agree to this? What? The United States and the USSR and China all agree that yes, we should have a treaty which limits nuclear weapons. Why would the haves have voted for this? Ha ah, Think about it. Think, oh, I can, I can see the wheels turning in your head. Because it put them into a position of being the only countries that had the power. Of course! If you're the only one that has something and the whole world's going to vote that no one else will have it, it's like, cool! You just made me more special. You just made me more powerful. Because now, us five countries with nuclear weapons, you've now said it in concrete that nobody else is going to get them. We are now more powerful and will stay more powerful than everybody else in perpetuity. So that's why the NPT became kind of this magical entity that everybody supported. Yeah, almost everybody. Not the entire planet signed up for the NPT. I said 189 members. You know now there's like 192 or 193 countries. Who are the three or four that didn't sign it? Hold on to that thought for just a minute. Let's talk about what the NPT does first. The NPT or the Non-Proliferation Treaty is a three-pillar system. That means it pretty much has three main goals in mind. And that is a one, non-proliferation, two, disarmament, and three, the right to peacefully use nuclear technology. In other words, nuclear energy technology. Ah, okay. The non-proliferation one, that's easy. Right? The number one non-proliferation means that all the signatories of this treaty promise to not sell nuclear weapons to anybody, not give nuclear weapons to anybody, and most importantly, actually, not give away nuclear weapons technology, not give away nuclear weapons information to anybody to then go, who would then go build a bomb. Huh? Non-proliferation, non-spread, stop the spread of nuclear weapons. That's number one, that's easy. We all get that. Number two is equally easy, disarmament. <laughs> Of course, that's referring to the powers that already have nuclear weapons should work towards getting rid of the weapons that they have, or at least disarming some of them, getting rid of some of them. And that's actually increased a lot in our lifetimes. Since the end of the Cold War, both the Soviets, now Russians, and the United States folks looked at each other and said, holy crap, we have like a hell ton of bombs. And we had enough bombs to kill everyone on the whole planet. What the hell are we supposed to do with all this shit now? We're not even in a Cold War anymore. We're not in a hot war that we can use them in either. Increasingly, states looked at this stuff and said, we can't even use these because they are ultimate destruction. And are we really going to, no matter how much we hate a country, ultimately kill every single citizen in it? I mean, it's that's a big, tough decision to make. And so these weapons are largely not really going to be employed, perhaps ever. So even the U.S. and Russia said, yeah, okay, we will decrease the number of active warheads we have. They still got a bunch, don't get me wrong, but they, the numbers are coming down slowly, right? That's disarmament. That's easy. Number three is the tricky one. And the third pillar in the NPT is the right to peacefully use and have nuclear technology, that is to have nuclear energy. Well, why is that tricky? Because what they have said in this treaty, and it's again, everybody in the world signed it except three countries, is that uh, if you sign the treaty, then it basically you're saying, I won't try to get nuclear weapons if I don't have them, but therefore I now can get the technologies, the information, the assistance, and the fuel to create a nuclear energy industry in my state. And, and when they built this thing, they did it for obvious reasons, People need energy, and nuclear energy in particular is going to be growing in our lifetimes. So everybody said, well, yes, we can't disclude uh, all nuclear stuff because everybody, this energy stuff's good. It's the weapon stuff that's bad. Unfortunately, they're kind of related. <laughs> so yeah, in creating a nuclear energy uh, industry, you then have the fuel and the capabilities to perhaps then go make a bomb. That's why it's really tricky. 
And I'll go ahead and throw this out there. Iran is the country that's making it really tricky in today's world. I and mean, you know this from current events. Iran has been saying, hey, we signed the NPT. It's true, they did. And Iran says, we have the right, therefore, to develop a nuclear energy industry. That's true, they do. <laughs> it's the Western world that says, they're lying, they just want a bomb. But Iran can now go through all the moves and say, no, we're building a nuclear power plant, we're doing this, and we're importing the fuel, and hey, we're following all the rules, so you can't make fun of us, even if we are covertly doing something bad. So that is why it's a very tricky, sticky situation with that pillar number three. Speaking of, hey, Iran's perhaps following the rules, or they're not following the rules, who makes sure these rules are being followed? Who's in charge of all of that? Who's in charge of punishing a country if they do try to get a nuclear weapon or do proliferate? That would be the IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Agency. It's a sub-branch of the United Nations. That's right. And that's why I always want you to know who is the head of the IAEA, because the IAEA is in charge of doing the inspections on nuclear energy or even nuclear weapons facilities around the planet to make sure everyone's following the rules and doing what they said in the NPT treaty. Ah, does that make sense? And that head of the IAEA is a very important person because they're the ones that would come out and say, hey, by the way, Iran's breaking the rules. Now, why would I suggest that's important? Think about it. If the IAEA head comes out and says, Iran broke the rules, they are actually trying to get a nuclear weapon. That is vital information which would change current events. It may change the United States or the UN or Europeans' opinion on whether to invade Iran or not. Uh, alternatively, uh, it was the IAEA head who back a decade ago said, oh, by the way, we're doing inspections in Iraq and they don't have any nuclear weapons. And the US said, ah, oh, you're full of shit. Of course they do. We're gonna go in there and get them. Oops, the IAEA head was right in that circumstance. So. What this person says in charge of the International Atomic Energy Agency does have a big impact on current events and policies, not just for America or Europe, but at the UN and the international level altogether. Okay, but I'm spiraling off on different tracks as usual. Let's get back to the nuke club. Having said all that, I now pointed out originally that the P5 countries were all declared nuclear powers, tested nuclear weapons, and signed the NPT. True. But then I said these other countries were a little more nebulous. Some of them have proven, India and Pakistan. Some of them have not proven and declared, Israel and North Korea. And those are the four, actually, that have not signed the NPT. Kablamo! There you go. Why would uh, India and Pakistan not sign the NPT? Oh, I know, because they hate each other. <laughs> because these countries have actually been at war with each other several times. They don't trust each other. They don't like each other. They are actually the scene of the most probable World War III scenario using nuclear weapons. It's between Pakistan and India. And that is why both of these countries have said, we're not signing that treaty because we don't trust our next door neighbor and we think they are gonna make more nuclear weapons and therefore we're not gonna sign a treaty which limits our nuclear weapon production. Neither one of them has. That's why India and Pakistan are in this uh, little category of their own. Declared, proven nuclear powers, not signing the NPT. Israel, of course, we know they got them, but they've never declared and they're not signing the NPT because they've said, well, we're not gonna follow the rules because that would require inspections by the IAEA. No, 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 no. We're going to remain in this netherworld of nebulousness. We don't know if we have nuclear weapons and therefore we're not signing the NPT. North Korea, for its part, originally did sign the NPT just so everybody would think they're not as insane as they actually are. And then they have now since recanted and pulled out. And that's why they, every now and again, they get, in, they get a, a fire under their ass or a nuclear fire under their ass. And they're like, oh, we're going to test, we're going to test, we're going to make a nuclear weapon. Uh, just to get attention. So they are officially not in it as well. So the only four countries that have not signed the NPT, India, Pakistan, Israel, and North Korea. And you know now why each of them haven't signed. Okay, who may be aspiring to become a nuclear weapon? There, now we've come back to Iran. They have been making great strides in their nuclear energy industry, which is legal. They signed the NPT. But the West fears 
that they're using that as simply a cover while they make a nuclear weapon. I, I bet some of this is starting to clear up a lot of questions you may have had about international politics and power plays on the planet that are going down right now. Iran is actually not alone, though. Well, they are in today's world. But there have been other countries in the past which have aspired to create nuclear weapons of their own. Because, let's face it, if you've got a nuclear weapon, that's power, man. Uh, who's going to mess with you once you have a nuclear weapon? It is mostly countries want these things to discourage anybody from attacking them. And make no bones about it, Iran wants it because Iran feels like they're going to be attacked at any given second. I'm not sympathizing with them, I empathize. I understand why Iran wants a nuclear weapon because they feel like the whole world hates them and may invade them in any second. And the world could. But if they get a nuclear weapon, ooh, ooh, wait a minute, that's a game changer. I don't know if we're going to invade or mess with a country that might launch a nuclear weapon at somebody. That's the whole point of having them, discouraging anybody from messing with you. And lots of countries in the past have said, oh, I think maybe we want one of those too. We would like to discourage anybody from messing with us. So countries that used to aspire to have a nuclear weapons program include Germany and Japan. But of course they lost World War II, so no, 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 no P5 for you, no nuclear weapons for you. Uh, but also countries like Brazil and South Africa, which were probably close at several points to creating a nuclear weapon. But they have since renounced and said, yeah, you know what, we don't need it. We're fine without getting a nuclear weapon. We'll sign the NPT. Uh, and of course, my favorite former aspiring nuclear power, which is Libya. That's right. Under crazy Colonel Gaddafi of Libya, they for years were trying to get secrets and start their own nuclear weapons program so that they could have the power that nobody would mess with them. And I'll bet you remember this from some classic American pop culture, that being a back to the future. Remember? Huh? Huh? Remember old Doc Brown? Whenever, how did Doc Brown get the plutonium to run the time machine, to get the DeLorean up to 88 miles per hour? You remember that scene? Oh, that's right. He got it from the Libyans. <laughs> Doc Brown says, they found me, they found me. I don't know how, but they found me. And Marty says, who did? The Libyans, run for it, Marty. <laughs> he got plutonium from them because they were trying to get him to build a nuclear bomb. <laughs> oh, that Doc Brown, I love him. Anyway, back to point. There are a lot of countries that have aspired to get nuclear weapons, but they, then they signed the, new, the NPT and they have since said, okay, we don't need them anymore, we're cool. What is the future of nuclear weapons and nuke stuff period on the planet. The reason I've gone into great detail in this little nuke section is because nuclear energy is going to become much more vital part of energy supplies on the planet for the rest of your life. A lot of countries are now starting to embrace this and say, hey, we all can't use oil and coal like uh, uh, the United States and China do. We're gonna run out of that stuff. Nuclear energy is sustainable, oh, and it doesn't produce CO2, so it's nice for global warming. So you're going to see an increase in nuclear energy for the rest of your life. You, you heard it here first, if you didn't know this already. So that's why this is more topical than ever before, is because a lot more countries are going to need to get the nuclear technology, uh, and nuclear fuel, and everything else nuclear to have their nuclear energy industry, so it's going to have to be regulated even more than before. So there's going to be a proliferation of nuclear energy, but they want to make sure they don't, at the same time, have a proliferation of nuclear weapons. Ha ha, that's the rub. And I bring this up because you can't have a nuclear energy industry without being a member of the NPT. Back to that again. And India and Pakistan and Israel, they can't legitimately get the fuel for a nuclear energy industry, even though they got nuclear weapons, they can't get assistance, technical assistance, or fuel to run a nuclear energy industry because even though they got nuclear weapons, they never signed the NPT. And to get the actual nuclear fuel you need to run a nuclear energy power plant, you have to be signed up for the NPT and get it from an international supplier, and that's regulated by the IAEA as well. I bring that up in particular because it's been in current events. India actually is the first country ever to get an exemption. They still have not signed the NPT, 
but the United States actually helped India, worked with them to get them exemption so that they could start developing their nuclear energy industry. The United States has partnered with them and went in and said, hey, you know what? India is a good guy. Uh, India is not going to attack anybody. Uh, and India is our democratic friend. So we want to help them get their nuclear energy industry up because guess what? We don't want a billion and a half Indians competing with all the oil that we need in our country. <laughs> so let them, let's get their nuclear energy going so that they won't compete with us for the other energy resources that the U.S. loves so much. So they actually just got an exemption through the IAEA. The U.S. is helping them in their nuclear energy industry. Pakistan actually wants to do the same thing. And the United States and the world have said, not! Are you kidding me? Pakistan, you're on the brink of collapse. Uh, you got a bunch of terrorists on your country. You're at war with yourself. Your economy's collapsing. You're, no, hell no, we're not going to give you an exemption to the NPT and have more plutonium floating into your country. We think you're completely unstable and it's not cool. On top of that, and for those of you that are really hip, you understand this stuff already. Pakistan's top nuclear scientist, his name was A.K. Khan. Uh, I don't know still what was going through his head. Nobody really does. But he took all of the nuclear weapons secrets that he knew and gave them out to everybody in the world. I, 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 and actually, he's a national hero in Pakistan. Everybody thinks he's great. But he gave nuclear secrets to North Korea, to, uh, to Libya, to Syria. And he is hailed as a hero at home, even though the rest of the international community is like... What a bastard! What'd you do that for? Uh, so given Pakistan's unstable situation along with uh, their leaking proliferation of nuclear material in the past, they have said, no, the world has said, no, 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 you don't get no exemption, Pakistan. But India, yes, will give an exemption too. And of course, to sum up, Iran is trying perhaps discreetly to get a nuclear weapon, but openly to get nuclear energy. And that is a source of friction between the U.S. and its allies and Iran and its allies. Uh, North Korea is trying overtly to perhaps get a nuclear weapon. And everybody in the world thinks they're insane nuts as shit. So no one's helping them do that. Not even their friend China. And there was even a first of its kind uh, international conference called by U.S. President Barack Obama in 2010 called the Global Summit on Nuclear Security in which Obama and lots of other folks, including the heads of the P5 countries, that got together to say, hey, we think we should work harder at this NPT stuff. And maybe we should work towards a nuclear-free world altogether, a nuclear weapons-free world. And they are going to, re they talked about, and they're working on, restructuring the NPT to make it even stronger, uh, to make real punishments for countries that break the rules and perhaps try to get nuclear weapons. Of course, they have Iran in mind, but it, it, it's going to apply to the whole world. I think they're even are going to put a clause in there that says, by the way, you won't be allowed to quit the NPT like North Korea did. So if you are in the NPT right now, which is everybody in the world, and then you decided at a later date that you'd like to have a nuclear weapon and you're going to pull out, no, we won't let you. I mean, putting real teeth into the whole uh, nuclear non-proliferation treaty, which hopefully in the long haul will limit dissemination, proliferation, and nuclear weapons themselves. Okay, sorry for this extended take on what is of course a completely not legitimate organization, but still one of the most powerful clubs on the planet, the Nuclear Club. And now you know your nukes.